So how could this karaoke program have possibly been developed? Well, this manual was invaluable. It was extremely valuable. The Programmer's Guide to the TRS-80 ROMs by Mumford. Okay, so the relevant chapters in here were um, understanding cassette input and output, and this uh, last chapter, the appendix, a program for faster recording of data tapes. That was the key. So let's jump to the end and look at that program. So here's the basic part of it. And as a test, you're generating 10 strings of numbers and you want to record them to cassette, but you need to have the first byte of your cassette data tape with um, a dummy variable because it needs a full leader to start and then it can write each number to tape using a user routine passing in the variable pointer of the string that you want to write which is fascinating so it, this is the test where it writes 10 numbers and then tells you to rewind the tape you play it back and um, now i'm actually using a different playback routine um, for fast um, input of tape data and display on the screen but this is the assembly code for the user routine now there's extra stuff here to make it link to the beginning of basic but my code i started here at the entry label and we can look at it here um, yeah it's the same code here as uh, entry so this is the source code that I actually started with to um, write a leader um, and then a sync byte. So this uh, OAH means it's only 10 bytes of leader. And uh, then the sync byte. And then you need a dope pointer. We're going to rope a dope to get the string. The string length, the string address, and then we uh, bump to the next character and we write them all to tape. So we could write up to 256 character strings at a time. Uh, and then uh, let's see, and it ends with a 0D or a carriage return. Okay, so they have this linked into BASIC uh, so that they can create a tape composite with both the assembly and the BASIC, but I just decided to poke it in my BASIC by myself. And essentially, I put um, the object code into data statements. And let's see, 0 to 100. Yeah, I poke it wherever I want. Um, I eventually figured out to put it like at the top of memory and set mem size. But uh, here is the code that reads the data and pokes it in. And then um, I've adapted this a little further. So how do we get the lyrics of the song into a Model 1? Well, the key is to use an emulator like TRS-80GP. So now I can paste from a file. So you do uh, edit, uh, paste file. And um, I had to uh, create all the basic statements as data statements in this file and end it with three at signs. That's my sentinel value. And now let's uh, pick that. So I started by downloading the lyrics to the song and then editing it line by line and manually creating the data statements. And now we open the file and look at that. We have a basic program with all the data statements. Now I need to save it to cassette. So if I do a C save from this emulator, it, uh, okay, it likes a file name. So let's do that. C save uh, Taylor. Okay, it doesn't matter what file name you give it to a cassette. Oh, you need quotes. Okay, I'm thinking Apple. <laughs> let's do a C save uh, quote Amy. Okay, and now it is writing the tape counter <laughs> to a new cassette. And then you save the cassette file as anything you want in your TRS-80 directory on your modern Mac, of course.
Okay, now we're ready to play that cassette into a real TRS-80 Model 1. Okay, so now we take that file and copy it to a SD card for one of these old SD card readers for your Windows 98 machine. And we uh, go to look at that file. And it is on the removable disk. Okay, and it is called uh, data6502.cas. So let's copy that to our TRS-80 directory on the C drive of Windows 98. TRS-80 and paste it there. Okay, I have 65 gigabytes for Windows 98. How nice. Okay, I already pasted it then. Okay, very good. So now what do we do? We turn on our TRS-80, but we load um, the play cassette. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to load the data 6502 cassette image into this play cassette. And we're going to play it into a real TRS-80. And we're going to save it as a WAV file when we're done. Okay, so let's boot the TRS-80. Okay, so we're going to do a C load as we play that tape from the uh, Windows 98 machine. Okay, started playing, and we should get the stars, and it's loading line by line, and it's done. And look what we have on a real TRS-80, we now have all that data. So I'm going to C save it and uh, we'll call it data 6502, but for tapes, it doesn't really matter. Okay, but before I hit enter, I'm gonna go to my 65, oh, my Windows machine and let's exit play cassette and let's start our sequencer recorder program. Okay. So what I need to do after starting this program is to make it a wave track and record it as a wave. Okay, and now I'm gonna do the save. Okay, and we are recording. And I wait until I hear the click from the TRS-80 where it would normally turn off the tape recorder. And that is when I stop the recording with the stop button here. Okay, so I heard the click and I stopped recording. I keep my take. And um, I'm gonna put a comment that uh, this is data 6502. dot cis and it's a, a c load i could put whatever lines i want in the other tracks let's say uh, we c load eh, from basic okay so now i save this file which is a wave file but i'm going to put it in my trs80 directory Okay, and this is data 6502. And I'm keeping it as a sequence file because I could mix MIDI in with sequence files. Okay, now I'm going to verify the tape. So let's go into the big audio, um, audio edit window as we play the tape back and do a C load question mark. Okay, so now we're going to verify the tape by doing a C load question mark on the TRS-80 while we play the tape. So I type C load, C load question mark. And now it's waiting for me to play a tape and I play the tape. And now we can watch, um, there's the leader. And uh, then it should, now the stars are on the screen and the, uh, the right star is blinking as it loads and verifies this tape. 
because what we're going to do next is append this to the um, karaoke program. Okay, it verified successfully. Okay, so we're going to look at the TRS-80 side now. Okay, we are going to now load the karaoke recording program, and we need a memory size of 32732, because um, 16K, which is in this Radio Shack, is a yes, 32768, and I just reserved some space for the machine language program right up to the edge of memory. Now I'm going to do a C load. Okay, play the cassette from the WAV file. And we should be seeing stars now. Where are the stars? There they are. Okay, we loaded. Very good. Let's look at this program. Okay, so we're reserving some string space and we're setting a pointer to one byte above that memory size. And um, BA is going to be incremented for each byte. And we read data. And then when we get a negative number, we exit. So we poke that machine code in, and then we go to 70 when we're done, and we print the ending address and clear the screen and set up our user vector to point to that machine code. And 90 is what pokes in the user vector pointer. Okay, now this code is what we'll actually write to the tape. So um, we're reading in a line of data, and uh, the three at signs is a sentinel value for when the data is done. And uh, we prepare our cassette, get a key, and we have to write a full liter first with uh, a dummy variable like the number zero. And then um, we are going to print the line on the screen so you could see what the next karaoke lyric is. And then when you press a key, we get the variable pointer to that line of text, which is in your L string variable. And then um, line 200 is where we actually call the user routine, passing in the pointer to that variable. And then we read the next line of text from the data. And uh, I put in that free statement just to free up any to garbage collect any memory at that point uh, that's not needed for the old string. And we got the next string. And then um, if we get another key press and we're checking for end of file. Um, so we stay in that loop between 200 and 215 until we're done. OK, so. Um, at the end of the program, there is one more string that needs to be written to the tape. And then we are done and use the next program to test out playing your karaoke recording from the tape that you recorded by this program. And now let's list 1000 on. Whoops. OK, well, at 1000, we have the data statement for the machine language code. Okay, now we need to load our karaoke data starting at address 2000, line 2000. So we need to append to this basic program. Okay, so after we've loaded this karaoke recording program, we need to get some addresses out of memory. So this pointer here is the start of the program. So write those numbers down, and they usually are uh, 233 and 66. Um, if you're not using a disk system, otherwise they'll be higher. And uh, be careful about getting BS errors, uh, bad subscript. <laughs> okay, so um, this next location is the current ending of the program. Now, in order to append to a program, we have to subtract two. So this is the high byte and that's the low byte. So we're going to put a 76 and a 70. Okay, so what we need to set is 
this pointer to these values so that it will load the second program at the end of the first program. But we have to subtract 2, so we are going to poke 16548 with a 76 and poke uh, 16549. Whoops. with a 70. Now we are ready to C load the next program, which is the tape that we saved, the data 6502 sequence program. So let's C load that and watch the stars. It's an 8-bit world and we're 8-bit girls, it's true, oh yeah. It's an 8-bit world and we're 8-bit girls, it's true, oh yeah. 6502, now we're standing on the bus. <laughs> Ay 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 6502, loading from a tape. <laughs> Oh no. Okay, so we just loaded the second program and if we list it, you're seeing it's only the 2000 data going to the end, but now we need to poke in our original addresses. So we have to poke, poke, don't poke it, poke it. Don't poke W it. Poke 16548 and type it right. 16548 with the original address of uh, 233 and poke 165, poke 16549 with a 66. Get your kicks on Route 66, and look what you have now, a appended program. And we better see save this before we get into any further trouble. Okay, and we'll call this uh, 6502 song. It shouldn't matter what we save it here, but what matters is the file name that you save it to when you write your tape as a WAV file. So this is how the MIDI arrangement of the song was made using band in a box where you just put in the chords and you uh, pick a style and it just play, it writes the song for you. There's a joystick in my hand, etc. And some of the choices I made were to use major sevenths for the uh, choruses and uh, yeah, put in some six and some 69s at the end, of course. All right, now, and then when I'm done, I created a MIDI file. Okay, so let's uh, load that MIDI file and we're going to uh, open this one. Yeah, let's play it in Windows. <laughs> No. Okay, so this is how the MIDI file from Band in a Box loads into Powertracks Pro. And what we're going to do now is uh, record any track. I'll just pick a blank one here and we'll make it a WAV track and it will mix the uh, WAV file with the MIDI. So what we're going to do now is go back to the TRS-80. Okay, now the tough part. We've uh, booted it with memory size 32732, and this is the code that we loaded from tape, and we are going to run it now, and we have to uh, time each line in sync with the music as we're recording. And, um, okay, so first it loads machine code, and now you want to start your recording and press enter at the same time. Okay, and get ready. 
get the first line up. And we didn't press it fast enough. We gotta really be on the spot here. So you retry it you, until you get a good take. So you wait for this message, you start your recording with the MIDI playback. So you're really recording a new wave track. So, cause you have to give it this intro time to load that leader. Okay, so we have just loaded the playback program, and this is using machine language and a user routine to um, play whatever it finds as it reads the tape. This is what the machine code does, and it comes from a book called uh, Programming Techniques for Level 2 Basic. Okay, so now you load your tape of um, the recording and uh, we're going to play it with the music. So we run this and wait for the screen to clear and then play the song. There's a joystick in my hand, there's a Atari on the stand, put a cartridge in the slot, cause we're gonna play a lot, switching on my phylicone, Benny ba 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 ba, Mario's the one I love, slipping on a paper glove.